So our next speaker is uh, Dr. Ajay Paul, uh, who is director and consultant at BBI Foundation, Kolkata. Uh, he's a prolific surgeon with amazing surgical skills. And uh, above all, he has a very pleasant personality and always uh, brings out positivity. Dr. Ajay Paul will be speaking on flex in cataract surgery. Can you unmute yourself, Dr. Ajay? Yes. Uh, sir, first open the presentation, then start the screen sharing. Presentation was open. Uh, just put it on presentation mode. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Yes. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm audible. I'll be speaking on flax in cataract surgery, the femtolaser assisted cataract surgery. So it's what I call it is an uh, revolution in evolution. That's what I say. So flax has emerged as a useful adjunct to conventional phacomalsification with the femtosecond laser prefragmentation followed by the, frag uh, the phaco fragmentation, the phacomalsification itself. So basically it automates all the surgical steps with increased predictability, the enhanced precisions because of the architecturally stable incision, the precise capsulotomy and the nuclear fragmentation and the closed globe Prefragmentation with enhanced safety actually gives a leeway in doing challenging cases. This is the biggest advantage of this, as I see it. So it was in uh, 2009 when Zoltan Nagy in uh, Budapest, when he from Budapest, he first presented this paper at the annual meeting of the American Academy, the one-year clinical experience with the new femtosecond laser, and this is where it showed that it offers a new level of precision and produce, reproducibility in ophthalmic surgery. So it was basically the concept was way back in 1991 when Jack Doddick coined postulated the idea of anti arc phacolysis. And it was not a decade later that the interlace with the corneal uh, femtosecond was uh, introduced. And it was again a decade later, somewhere in 2008 and then 2009, 10, then the, the, the whole idea of femtolaser cataract surgery started. It was in the USA in Stephen Slade. And then following year, multiple uh, the, uh, the uh, platforms have come in, the uh, Lensa, the, uh, the Catalyst, Victus. And as of 2015, some more than 10 million cases have been done. I have no financial interest. It's just that I use the Catalyst platform. Well, what's femtosecond laser? Now, this is a ND arc laser of 1053 wavelength with the size of three micron. Now, it emits optical pulse in the duration and domain of femtosecond. And what's femtosecond? It's 10 to the power minus 15 of a second. You can have picosecond, you have nanosecond. So this is one of the 10 up to the power minus 15. Now, what it does? It does the femtosecond laser is such a you know ultra short pulse that there is no uh, when this laser goes into the tissue, there is no micro cracking, no melt zone, no shock waves, as against the microsecond laser where there is always a, a color rate um, damages like micro cracking and shock waving, etc. So what it does is a photo disruption method where there's ionization of atoms, formation of shock waves, disruption of tissue with a very low influence for surrounding tissue. Now what it does, now if you look at the, uh, the how it works, the principle is a highly focused laser pulses. They, call, they do a phenomena called laser-induced optical breakdown, uh, and uh, this causes a plasma of free electrons and ionized molecules. Now these forms cavitation bubbles, which expands, and these acoustic waves, they expand, and the cavitation bubbles, they enlarge coalesce to allow a separation of the tissues. Now if you look at these pulses, now pulses, if they are high energy, uh, pulses or high energy pulses, there are larger bubbles, widely staged pulses. So you'll have low repetition rate of the pulse when you are cutting the tissue, but you have a low energy, small bubbles, and more overlapping of pulses of higher repetition and less collateral. Level. So this is the principle used where you are using it to cut the lens or the capsule or the cornea. Now, this is a uh, small video, as you could see, I think. Uh, 
this video is not playing again. So anyway, uh, just stop that video. So the, what it does, the three-dimensional image actually it does the anterior and posterior lens capsule, the three-dimensional image as well as spectral luminosity, the femtosome laser, and then you have that whole thing going into and uh, going into the lens and the, uh, the uh, cornea and the lens and the capsule. So it does scans it. So it scans both the posterior and the anterior capsule. And there is an accurate range of determination from limbus to limbus with high contrast. And it uses either a OCT or a 3D confocal structure illumination. So what it does, there is a variable numerical aperture. So how does it reach all these tissues? So it, the programmable aperture size in the lab, it actually is, uh, aperture size changes the laser spot size automatically according to the tissue it cuts. So it could be the smallest size would be, which is cuts the lens, then there is the capsulotomy, then the cornea. So three different sizes of variable aperture as it fires the laser. So the imaging could give you the, uh, the side view, as you can see the capsular view. You could give a topographic view over the lens, so you can the thickness of the lens at what uh, the region at will fire, and then the cornea side view. Then you can have the the incisions at what you have. So if you look at the laser, there could be corneal laser and the cataract laser. Then there's a difference between that. If you look at, compare with the corneal laser, wavelength is the same, but the pulse duration is different. The pulse energy is different, and the repetition rate is different, and the depth at which it goes for the cataract is also more than what it does for the corneal laser. So you do have those, uh, the, the, uh, the LOIs, laser optic interface, or the, uh, the applinating contact lenses. So in case of some uh, platform like Lens 6, these are smaller, it's a smaller orbit. It is fit for smaller orbit, it's a separate. They have got separate reference plane for incision. And uh, uh, once it uh, applies the cornea, it produces a slight corneal wrinkle. So as a result, you could have a better incision with this, but the capsulotomy may, might meet sometimes, miss you sometimes. But in case of uh, these, uh, the, the, the non-contact, non-applinating type, you have less IOP rise, and there's a liquid interface there. So it's disadvantageous for small orbits and require sophisticated imaging and corneal incision. So corneal incision may not be better in these, but the capsulotomy is definitely works better. The docking is where the cornea curvature and docking could have problem because of the stiff corneas and corneal folds and flat corneas, there'll be difficult cornea. Conjunctival docking can have a little bit of redness or hemorrhage. The safety zone that you use, minimum distance around 500 microns, that is the depth of the nucleus, and the safety zone with the iris pupillary border also, you generally uh, separate around one millimeter so that it doesn't hit the iris and give rise to uh, meiosis of the pupil. And this is how the image, you can see this, the capsular, both at the uh, in front of the capsule and behind the capsule, it starts and you have a clearance of almost 200 microns there. And this is the nuclear where you see there's a 500 micron difference in most of the, uh, except the PPCs that will come to, uh, in, as you show the video. And this is the corneal incisions that you can actually scan. Now about capsulotomy, actually the capsulotomy starts from this a spiral pattern is applied first posterior to the capsule and advances anteriorly. This is how it's applied and then goes in front. In that case, if there is a bit of tilt, it uh, compensates for it. The type of femto capsulotomy could be free floating capsulotomy, the microhydrations, the incomplete treatment pattern and irregular complete pattern. And this we have shown in the videos. So what does, why is anti-capsulotomy so important? Why does it matter most? Because of the effective lens position and we had stock on the biometry, how the lens has to be placed at the right position. And we know that this is the studies of Hagis and Hill that the size of capsule axis actually affects the effective lens position. So you need to have a round centered and just smaller than the IOL. You have the shrink wrap effect. And that is where the effective lens position would be right. And that is why the biometry would do. So this is the biggest advantage of having a central round um, predictable rexis. And this is the refraction as this is a study shows that with the, uh, with the laser, the, the refraction is uh, almost as much the distribution if you see within the minus point, 0.25 to plus 0.25. This is the best when it is done with the laser as against the uh, manual one. The circularity is measured in the manual rexis. The mean circularity is could be around 0.774, whether with the, the laser capsulotomy is 0.93, it's almost 
equivalent, there is a significant higher quality of circularity with the with the laser than against the manual one. And with the femtolaser assisted refractive capsular axis, these are the newer things that have come in where there is a notch there with the capsular axis. You can do and you can incorporate this with the image guided system and you can have the rexis also a bit notch where you can have the toric marker installed in that. The pattern of nucleotomy can be chopped, cylinder, hybrid, and matrix. We'll be seeing the different type of uh, the patterns that we do. And definitely these studies of Palankar and Nagy et al. have shown there is a 39% reduction of the, the CD when you are doing phaco multiplication, when you have actually chopped the pitch of the, uh, the nucleus, there is a different pattern. And the impact of effective phaco time, this is a study by Burke and Dick, uh, definitely in LOCS grade three and grade four cataract, there is a definitely uh, reduction in the effective phaco time. Again, this study by Zakas and also there is a 51% reduction of average phaco power and 43% reduction of effective phaco time. And again, the, if you see the length fragmentation pattern and the post of inflammation, this study by our own from the Ames, Dr. Tithyan and all have shown that there is a less endothelial cell loss and post operative inflammation when you use the matrix pattern of emulsification. The corneal incision can be triplanar or biplanar. You can choose it as you do it. You can have a the, the, the arcuate laser arcuate incision can be uniform depth, precise, reproducible arc shape, and you can definitely correct as we have in our experience have shown that up to 1.5 diopter of astigmatism can be corrected with the laser arcuate incisions. These are some of the, uh, the intrastromal opening that uh, the anterior ASOCT has shown, and it can be open also if this is where the post op it has been opened right into the periphery that we'll be showing. The clear corneal incision morphology that the DMD, the there's a lower incidence of DMD with these incisions as against the, the blade incisions. Now, something that is to be uh, noted, I think this happened with the earlier uh, generation of machine, the capsular block syndrome and the intralenticular class. Today's machines or today's software actually reduce the amount of gas that is formed, the bubbles that are formed inside, but this, these bubbles can entrap and can uh, give rise to the PCR but this is not there and the present generation of machines. Intraoperative meiosis, as I've seen, the laser hitting the pupillary margin or the mechanical effect itself, it is a prostaglandin in the myopic and pseudo exfoliative white. You can have intraoperative meiosis, but the best way is to use NSAIDs before the surgery. The contraindication as such is not known, but corneal disease, any corneal pathology, keratoconus, corneal opacities, the pedicid marginal degeneration, uh, an advanced dry eye can be a contraindication, pacemaker in situ, a patient who cannot keep his head or the back is not. Uh, or uh, you no, know, there is a neck deformity where the patient, because the patient has to lie down under the machine uh, for some time and maybe a minute or so. So this is one of them. The existing corneal implant can be contraindication, though it is being done now in pediatric surgeries and glaucoma. These are relative contraindication as such. So uh, to sum it up, Tax parcels, um, the conventional FACO, the visual outcomes are similar. Studies have shown endothelial safety is more with the flax. And anatomical precision is flax as far as capsulotomy, incision, effective FACO multiple time, and energy is definitely has shown. A lot of studies have shown that is definitely is better with the flax as compared to the manual FACO that we are doing. Uh, but there is no significant difference in terms of complication or vitreous loss. Now we'll come to show a bit of those femto advantages in challenging cases, nine cases that I'll be showing that this is a, that real advantage is the, these rock hard cataracts. You know, rock hard cataracts, as you can see, I've done around 5 or 5.25 rexis. This is a free floating rexis that you see. I've done six chops. And then the separations become so easy as I'm using a lesser power here, lesser energy is being used and the emulsification is going on easily. I've got six chops and that comes out easily. And in some cases, definitely I use this matrix softening. Now this is again in the rocket cataract, this is the biggest uh, advantage that you don't have to pull your zonular, the pull in the zonules where you are separating or you are chopping, see these are equally chopped and the matrices that are made have made the lens softer. The amount of energy and the phaco time is definitely down and you have a better crystal clear, crystal clear cornea on the next day. 
white intumescent and cataracts, we know that they can be a problem, especially when you're doing capsulorexis manually, they can spread or they can suddenly have an Argentinian plaxen. And in this case, you can have a little bit of micro radiations left because the, some of the fluid might escape right in the beginning, as in this case, the fluid has escaped, but there are enough impression there, you can just complete the capsulorexis very easily because there are lines you might have missed because the change in the alignment once a little bit of tweed escapes. But you can take out and again, in these white and advanced cataracts, doing these softening actually helps and brings down the PECO energy. And in this case, where we have done the six chops and the chop separation is easy. The energy used is uh, One minute. less. And that's how we go ahead. That's a small pupil. You can definitely uh, have an advantage in the small pupil. As you can see, this is a 4.5 millimeter. I've used uh, viscoelastic there. And the free floating rexis has come out. And again, I've not used any uh, device here, but I can carry on my emulsification with that small pupil as, the, as I go. And again, use a little bit of viscoelastic, get the emulsified material out and get that advantage. And this is one of the cases where I use, as my earlier speaker, when I said VHEX in these cases, and when subway and I have seen the Rex, the pupil is coming down, use VHEX and got away with it. The emulsification is done in that. And with reduced energy, as you can see, the energy is reduced and I can definitely get in and put the lens of my choice in this case. Yeah, just a minute or so. And in the soft cataract, I do a visco dissection as you can see, you can separate those uh, the small pie, and so no longer you have to do all those, you know, struggling with those, getting uh, the, uh, the, the deep bowl and not getting through it. In posterior polar cataract, as I said, I'm using a, in this uh, machine, I'm using the bigger cubes, and uh, there I am. I have kept a 800 micron, you know, safety zone, and once I've done with it, there I've got the the, the incision done and the lens and there you can see I'm using a bit of viscoelastic go behind the capsule and then just do a bit of hydro delineation. And once I've done the delineation, I look at this, it can just suck it and take it out. And the pieces come out and there I can just suck it and the bimanual eye just get it out and finish the surgery without any risk and you can see that the PPC has come out and just peel off the, and the peeling off is also easy as you go if at all, you cannot catch it, do a bit of sideway. In post R case also, this can work last very well. Yeah. yeah, 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 just the, the last way and the post R case. And I think subluxated, uh, my earlier speaker has already shown. Thank you, thank you for your presentation. Thanks for a very uh, great detailed talk, <coughs> including about all about the femtosecond laser principles and the different videos you showed.